بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in the book we're going to fiqh al-asma al-husna knowledge and understanding of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful names last week we looked at manzilatul ilm the status and the lofty position of having knowledge of allah's names and his attributes and this week the way we're going to go through this book is that every single week week we're going to look at an excellence or virtue of learning Allah's names and attributes. And then we're going to one of the chapters of the book. Because the author, Hafizahullah Azza wa Jal, concerning just the virtues and the excellence of knowledge of Allah's names and attributes, dedicated three complete chapters just to the excellence of this. So every week, inshallah ta'ala, before going to one of the chapters of the books, we'll go to the excellence and then we're going to one of the chapters we're going to look at. And the chapter we're going to look at today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is a very important chapter. And that chapter is Iqtida Asma'ullahi wa Sifatihi li athar min al khalqi wa taqween. The dictates, the necessities of Allah's beautiful names and his attributes in terms of his effect upon the creation and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he formulates, or Allah ta'ala, he constructs his creation. But before that, the introduction, which is the excellence of this knowledge. The Shaykh, rahimah, Allah ta'ala, he says, لا ريب أن العلم بأسماء الله وصفاته أشرف العلوم الشرعية That there's no doubt whatsoever. That knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and his attributes is from the most noble knowledge of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Askal Maqasid al Uliya, the highest of aims and objectives. And the reason this is the highest of aims and objectives, the most noble knowledge of the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Alita'alluqihi bi ashraf al ma'loom. Because this knowledge is connected to the most noble and the most honorable thing that's ever been known. And what's the most noble thing that's ever been known? The most honorable thing a person could know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you have this knowledge, you have the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore he said, Al-ilm, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his names and attributes is the most no honorable of all knowledge and the most noble of it. And it's also connected to the religion which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the prophets and messages with. Ad-deen al hanafiyyah the deen of Hanafiyyah. Because all the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sent them with three missions. The first is to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is to show them or to show the people that are being called the path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third of it is what? Hal, the conditions of those who respond to the, the cause of the messengers in terms of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that the call of the messengers of Allah, inna da'wata rusul thadur ala thalathati umur. The call of all the messengers of Allah revolves around three things. And what are the connections of these three things to Allah's names and attributes? He said the first mission or the first cause of the Prophet is ta'rif al-rabb al-mad'u ilay bi asma'i wa sifatihi wa fa'alihi. That the first mission of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to let the people be aware and know who is their Lord. How? Bi asma'i wa sifatihi. To his names and his attributes. 
This is the first call of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second mission is what? The path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that part that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'rif al-tariqa al-musila ilayh, is through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa shukrihi, gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, to make them know that we shall attain when they reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how is this connected to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It says that the greatest thing they'll achieve, rid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the greatest things, is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and greater than the paradise of Allah azza wa jal. And what is greater than the pleasure of Allah and the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the greatest thing for the belief in Allah azza wa jal? To see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi, you will have no greater objective, no greater aim than wanting to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who know his attributes in Jannah, salamun alayhim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them salam. And being that this is the message of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messengers, there's no doubt that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came with his da'wah, he explained to the ummah who their Lord is, described to the ummah the attributes and the names of their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to a point there's not a cloud of doubt whatsoever for anyone from the ummah to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, تَرَكَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى مَحَجَّةِ الْبَيْضَى that the Prophet, he left us upon clear guidance. So clear is this guidance, Layluha kanahariha, that the night is like the day. That's how clear it is. And they said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he left us and he mentioned the knowledge of everything to us. Ma min ta'irin fi sama. To a point, as an example, or metaphorically, there is not a bird that flies with his wing in the heavens, illa dhakra lahu minhu ilman, except he mentioned a knowledge of it to us. So you find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to everything, etiquette of even going to the bathroom, what foot you should enter the bathroom with, what foot you should exit with, what you should say before you enter, how to wash yourself, how to eat, how to drink. He mentioned all of these things in details to us. So do you not think the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam therefore will mention that which is more important, which is the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a statement Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah azza wa jal to show the excellence of this knowledge. That man fi qalbihi adna haya aw mahabbah li rabbihi wa iradati li wajihi wa shawq ila liqaihi فَطَلَبُهُ لِهَاذَا الْبَابُ وَحِرْسُ عَلَى مَعْرِفَتِهِ وَازْدِيَادِهِ مِنْ تَبَصُّرُ فِيهِ وَالسُؤَالُهُ That whoever has an atom or the least life in his heart and the least love for his Lord and is truly seeking his Lord and truly wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala him seeking this knowledge and being eager to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having an insight into Allah, who is Allah Azza wa Jal, who wa akbar maqasidihi wa a'adhum matalibihi. This should be his greatest aim and his greatest objective. Wa laysat al-qulub sahiha. The heart will never be in a correct state. Or the soul at peace. In not seeking or yearning anything connected to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor would it face, nor would it taste happiness or joy greater than the joy of knowing is Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why this is the greatest of aims and objectives, to show the excellence of this knowledge. Because this knowledge that the prophets of Allah ta'ala came with, to call you to Allah, the path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no way to know what leads to Allah except through his names and his attributes. There's no way to know Allah azza wa jal except through this. And that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء The people that truly fear Allah from his servants are who? The ulama. Ibn Qayyim, or Afwan, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullahu azza wa jal, he said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَاهُ حَقَّ خَشْيَتِهِ الْعُلَمَاء The people that truly fear Allah are the scholars. الْعَارِفُونَ بِهِ The ones that know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-azim al-alim, al-mawsu bi sifat al-kamal, the more you know Allah, the exalted, the all-knowing, that's described with the descriptions of perfection and beautiful names, the more your knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala atammu, it becomes more complete. Wal-ilmu bihi akmal, and your knowledge of Allah ta'ala becomes perfected. كانت الخشية أعظم وأكثر. The more you fear Allah subhanahu wa taala, and the greater or you, you fear of Allah taala will be. And that's why they say, فمعرفة الله تقوى. That knowing Allah subhanahu wa taala it causes تقوى, and it causes you to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and not to hope in anybody but Allah عز وجل, and it causes your iman to increase, and it causes from it acts of different forms of worship for you to be connected to. So this is the introduction to this chapter today, which is iqtida. What are the necessities? What are the dictates of knowing the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its effects when you look at the creation of Allah ta'ala and how Allah formulates things? This chapter, min anfa'il umur, from the most beneficial of issues, that tujibul al-abd al-rifa'a, that it causes you to be raised in status. And it aids you in knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good way. And it makes you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you look at the creation of Allah, and you know the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you ponder on these names and see how they affect the creation and the formulation of this creation, increases what? The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your knowing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And makes you devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the most devoted of the people, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once they asked his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, ماذا كان أعجب أمري رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم? What is the most amazing thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever did? And Aisha radiallahu anha, she replied and said, وَأَيُّ أَمْرِهِ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَجَبًا Whatever did he ever do that was not amazing? But from all of these amazing things, she mentioned one thing, that once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the middle of the night, he got up and he pointed to the skies and he read the saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa akhtilafi layli wal nahar. That verily, in the alternation of the night and the day, in the, inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternating of the night and the day is a sign for people of understanding. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went back to sleep. Then he got up again, read the same ayah and pointed to the skies. He did this three times. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Waylun, woe unto the one, yaqra'uha. He reads these verses, walam yatafakkar fiha, and he does not contemplate upon it. Because the more you contemplate on it, knowing the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more devoted you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And contemplating or pondering over the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes in terms of his effect upon the creation and how Allah formulates things is one of the most beneficial because the whole universe and that which they contain, the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon, the night, the day, that which moves, that which does not move, all of these things are what? From the consequences, from the results and the effect of what? The attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the poet said, Ta'ammal sutur al kainat fa innaha. The poet said, just look at the creation of the universe. Fa innaha, everything you see in the universe. مِنَ الْمَلَكِ الْأَعْلَى إِلَيْكَ رَسَائِلِ Subhanallah. That everything you see in the universe, مِنَ الْمَلَكِ الْأَعْلَى is from the most majestic Allah Azza wa Jal. الْأَعْلَى, the highest being, إِلَيْكَ رَسَائِلِ is a specific letter and a message to you. وَقَدْ خَطَّ فِيهَا and is written in this message to you. 
لو تأملت خطها He has written and described in this message hallmarks for you ألا كل شيء خل الله باطل Every single thing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is false When you look at the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal Allah has written a message for you And he went on to say Say تشير بإثبات الصفات لربها Everything you see The sun, the moon, the heavens, the earth تشير It is indicating to you and pointing to you The attributes of its Lord That فصامتها يهدي ومن هو قائل Even that which is silent from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It guides you to Allah And that which speaks from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should guide you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَسْتَ تَرَى شَيْئًا You will not find anything that is more of a proof and evidence of his attributes of his Lord and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his perfect attributes and his beautiful names. So therefore, the author, Hafidhullah ta'ala, he said, وَكُلُّ إِسْمٍ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ And this is an important principle here. That every single name from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَهُ صِفَةٌ خَاصٌ Has a specific attribute. And what is the specific attribute of every name? Where they say Ar-Rahman, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Wahhab, Al-Jabbar, Al-Quddus. He says, فَإِنَّ أَسْمَاءَهُ أَوْصَافُ مَدْحِ Every single name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an attribute of praise and perfection. Another thing when it comes to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an attribute, وَكُلُّ صِفَةٍ لَهَا مُقْتَدٍ وَفِعْلٌ Every attribute of Allah, or every name of Allah, عفواً, has a consequence. It has a what? A consequence. For example, Allah ta'ala is a rahman is a rahim What is the consequence of Allah ta'ala being a rahman وَسِعَتْ رَحْمَتُهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ his mercy covers everything, everyone, the pious, impious, the believer, the disbeliever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-aziz. He has a consequence. And every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an object of that action. He has an object of that action. In terms of the commands of Allah, the prohibitions of Allah, the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward and punisher of Allah. These principles are very important that you cannot separate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names from his actions or you cannot separate Allah's names from his attributes and you cannot separate the actions of Allah from the objects of that action or the object of an action from what? The actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very important principle. Why? Because whoever separates the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his names or the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his attributes, what would this person end up doing? He will end up affirming to Allah that which is not what? Befitting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Qadir, Al-Qadir, He has power and ability over everything. So, but from those attributes is, every attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an attribute of praise and what? Perfection. So if you believe Allah has power over everything, like some of these atheists, agnostic, when you go to places like Hyde Park, they're arguing with the kuffar, the Christians, who have no knowledge, like the Muslims. They say, do you believe Allah has ability or God has ability over everything? The Christian will say, yes. But what would the Muslims say? Do you believe Allah has ability over everything? What would the Muslims say? Yes. Based on what we say, yes, and that's it. No. You say, yes. In that which befits him. In that which befits him. Because the next thing they'll say to the Christian then, if you believe that, can God create a stone which is too heavy for him to lift? If he has the ability to, of course he can, but it doesn't befit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people end up negating or affirming to Allah ta'ala that which doesn't belong to Allah azza wa jal. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the kuffar. 
وما قدر الله حق قدره إذ قالوا ما أنزل الله على بشر من شيء that they've not truly known Allah are given his estimate when they say Allah didn't send anything upon mankind no message there's no risala no guidance and they affirm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which he is above or negate it because they don't truly know Allah azza wa jal for example they reject the hereafter why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you look at the verses concerning the hereafter like surah at tatwir that they say, whoever wants to see Yawm Al-Qiyamah bi'aynihi, as though he can see it, let him read Surah Al-Taqweer. And when you read the ayahs of Surah Al-Taqweer, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُبِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ مُنْكَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُجِّرَتْ Subhanallah. That the mountains will just disappear. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ Oh, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ When the oceans, with all their vastness, and their coolness and the water would just burst into fire. They could not comprehend or accept this. What's going to happen to the mountains? What's going to happen to the heavens? So Allah Ta'ala says, their problem is what? وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ Because they don't know Allah Azza wa Jal, they've not given Allah Ta'ala its true what? Its true value. Allah Ta'ala said, وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ that the whole earth, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, will be in the grasp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالسَّمَاوَاتْ مَطْوِيَاتٌ فِي يَمِينِ And all the heavens will be folded up in the right hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Above Allah ta'ala is that which they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the importance of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His names and through His attributes. For example, they affirm to Allah Azza wa Jal things which makes no sense. And Allah asks, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think, because they believe Allah is the creator. They believe that. But they created for what? For nothing. That do you think we created you, عَبَثًا, without a purpose, and you're not going to come back to Allah Azza wa Jal? So on the opposite or on the, in the parallel, a person that knows the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes, what does he do? He negates certain things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, when we look at what they affirm to Allah, they affirm that to Allah. Allah never sent anything upon mankind. The one that knows Allah by his names and attributes, what would he negate this with? How would you negate this? By knowing Allah. What name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would you know to negate this? That Allah said, Hamidul Majid, the one of praise, the glorious. Oh, the name of Allah, what? Al Hakim. That is against the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He created mankind. Alam yakun that mankind was just a sperm. Thumma kana alaqatan. And it became a blood cut. And He created him and fashioned him. فَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ And then Allah Ta'ala made from him male and female. Allah did all of this and Allah Ta'ala asked before that. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Do you think Allah Ta'ala will leave you in a state of suda? No order, no commands. When a person knows the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, الحي, that Allah Ta'ala is الحي, he will negate certain things from Allah Azza wa Jal. Like the kuffar, they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خلق السماوات والأرض created heaven and earth in how many days? Six, and he rested on the seventh. The believer that knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates this. Why? Allah ta'ala says, Allah is what? Al-Hay Al-Qayyum That is the ever-living, ever-existing. And what follows that? لا تأخذه Sleep doesn't overtake him because sleep is a form of death. When a person knows Allah Ta'ala is Al-Hay, he will know Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala definitely has actions. Because nobody that is alive doesn't have any what? Actions. You have to have an action. And due to this, they say the greatest name of Allah Ta'ala is what? Some of the scholars. They say, Ismullahi A'adham. And this is important in this chapter because if the messengers called us to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, 
worship Allah Ta'ala through his names and through his attributes. So once a Sahabi radiallahu an, he made a dua. He said, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi annaka anta Allah al-ahad al-samad. And another hadith, inni as'aluka bi annaka anta Allah al-hay al-qayyum. I ask you because you're Allah al-hay al-qayyum. Also the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ismullahi a'adham. Allah's greatest name is in the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning of Surah Al-Imran. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayy al-qayyum. Some of the scholars, they say, because repeatedly the name Al-Hay, he comes, the greatest name of Allah is what? Al-Hay. That name, but if you call by Allah Ta'ala, will answer you. If you seek, Allah will give you. Why? Because Rahmah, mercy, seeing, hearing, all of these attributes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is impossible without what? Without life. A person who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-basir, is the all-seeing, all-hearing. Will negate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will negate from Allah that Allah has not heard or seen anything. The person who knows Allah ta'ala is al-khaliq, al-raziq, is Allah, the creator, the provider, will not believe there's a creation without a what? A creator. A person who knows Allah ta'ala is al-malik, will not believe this, uh, this is al-malik without a what? Without a kingdom. Allah Ta'ala is malik. O malik, the king. And where's the kingdom of Allah Azza wa Jal? Malik yawm al-deen. Kingdom of Allah Azza wa Jal, is it in the hereafter only or the dunya or the hereafter? Dunya and what? Hereafter. But why does Allah Ta'ala say malik yawm al-deen? Because on the day of judgment, there will be no kings. Nobody will ever deny that Allah Ta'ala is the only king on the day of judgment. Tayyib. So the Shaykh, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he went on to say that every single name of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, it dictates wisdom when you know Allah Ta'ala by his names and attributes. That you will know. فِي كُلِّ مَا قَضَاهُ وَقَدَّرَهُ حِكْمَ الْبَالِغَ Everything which Allah Ta'ala has dictated or Allah Ta'ala has decreed, there's a wisdom. And this is the help that people are tested in this dunya with different things, with wealth, with health, with children, with jobs. But you know in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, you know there's a wisdom to this thing. Once a sister sent on a group an ayah, which I'm trying to remember now. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala translation was, is the one that's perfected the creation of everything. And she sent this in a group for sisters or families who have children that are severely autistic. That even in that child, Allah ta'ala, as it decreed, there's a perfection there or there's a wisdom for it. You have to accept it. Wallahi. That everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, has decreed, has legislated. Whether you could see it now, you could not see it now, there's a wisdom. وَحِكْمَتُهُ بَالِغَةً And the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بَالِغَةً Is subhanAllah, you cannot comprehend. Sometimes in life we see this, that you want a particular thing and it didn't happen. You see something as a tragedy, there's actually a goodness for you in it. كَذَلِكَ He went on to mention, that every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find akmalu nasi ubudiyyatan, the best of people when it comes to worship of Allah, whether it's fasting, whether it's praying and devotion, are the people al muta'abbad bi jami' al asma wa sifat, that worship Allah with all his names and attributes. These are the best of people in terms of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? He said, these people that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all these things and attributes. He said, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qadiru, is the one that has power over everything. And he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this name and this attribute, he has power over everything. He could seize him for any of his sins. He doesn't stop him or block him from worshiping Allah azza wa jalla as what? Al-Halimu al-Rahim.
because he knows both attributes. They don't go against each other. The one that knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing is al mu'ti is the one that gives. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wala mu'tiya lima manat. Nobody could give that which you prohibited. He also worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as what? al mani the only one that withholds. The one that knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all these names and attributes is the best of people in worship to Allah azza wa jal. And that's what Allah ta'ala said. Walillahi al-asma'ul husna. To Allah belongs the most beautiful name. Then Allah commands us after this. What does Allah say after this? Fad'uhu biha. What does fad'uhu biha mean? It means do dua of Allah with these names. What is dua? Huh? What is dua? Huh? No, what is it? How do you what, define to me a dua? This is important for especially the brothers that attended Kitab Tawheed. Allah Ta'ala says, Fad'uhu biha. When I say do dua, what are we saying to do? Barakallah feet. Act of worship, that's one. And dua. Because a dua, no, dua ul mas'ala, the dua of asking, asking Allah Ta'ala. And dua of ibadah, of worship, meaning fasting, prayer, hajj. All of this is what? Ibadah. So Allah Ta'ala said, Fad'uhu bihi or biha. Call upon him with, with what? With all of them. With all the names of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Meaning worship Allah with all his names and attributes. And that's why they say, when you say Allahumma, Allahumma, because in Arabic, if you want to call someone a nida, you say yeah. From the way of calling someone is also ma, oh. They say when you say Allahumma, Allahumma, is as though you're calling Allah Ta'ala by all his names and attributes. Allahumma Rabbi. And some say when you say just Allah, just Allah, you're calling Allah Ta'ala with all his names and attributes. So fad'uhu biha. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all his names and attributes. Tayyib. So the Shaykh, he concludes by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhibbu asma'ahu wa sifati. He loves his names and his attributes. And he loves the effects or the causes of these names and attributes in his creation. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ زُومِ كَمَالِهِ All of that is from the obligations of his perfection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَتَحَا سُبْحَانَهُ لِعِبَادِهِ أَبْوَى مَعْرِفَتِهِ That Allah has opened the gates and the doors to his servants to know him, to have an insight into Allah Azza wa Jal bi asma'i wa sifatihi with his names and attributes through this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he calls his servant into how to know Allah Azza wa Jal, be aware of him in two ways. Number one, another fi maf'ulatihi, looking at the objects of the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that are a proof of what? His names and his attributes. Then when you look at objects of actions, it's a proof of what? Of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the names. Number two, التفكر في آياته وتدبرها In the Quran, Allah Ta'ala calls us to contemplate or commands us to contemplate upon the signs of Allah and to think about the signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he said, when it comes to the signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, أول التفكر في آيات الله المشهودة The signs of Allah that we see from the creations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Number two, from the signs of Allah, the ayat of Allah, Al-ayat, al-matluwa, the verses which you recite in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are wide doors fi ma'rifati rabbi al-majid to know our Lord the most glorious, al-ilahu al-hamid, the one that is worshipped, al-hamid, full of praise. Subhanallah. So he says, فَسُبْحَانَ مَنْ تَعَرَّفَ إِلَى خَلْقِهِ بِجَمِيعَ وَا تَعْرُفَاتِ Glory be to the one that has made himself known to his creation in all different forms. وَدَلَّهُمْ عَلَيْهِ بِأَنْوَاعِ الدَّلَالَاتِ And guided them to it with all types of evidences. وَفَتَحَ لَهُمْ جَمِيعَ 
الطرقات that opened all paths to him and إليه الصراط المستقيم and guided into the straight path so he says, after seeing these signs and knowing some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he concluded with saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَمْ بَيِّنَا وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّ عَمْ بَيِّنَا So that the one that wants to perish or wants to perish, perishes after seeing the clear signs. And the ones that want to live, lives after seeing the clear sign. Next week, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to go into the dictates of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its effects upon the worship or servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this, inshallah ta'ala, we conclude here, inshallah. Any questions? Now, the brothers asking a question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءِ الْحُسْنَ فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the most beautiful names, فَدْعُوهُ So he's asking, that the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call him by his name, is it a wajib? Is it an obligation? Like we said, dua here is dua of ibadah. It's incumbent for us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of these attributes that we know of. So it's an obligation. And it's impermissible, therefore, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything or in any way or any belief that was goes against these names and these attributes so it's an obligation and some of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attributes there's some of them that's known fitratan by what your natural disposition as a person it's just natural in any person that Allah sees even the most jahil person Allah hears Allah answers there's certain sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Attributes which is based on what? Natural disposition. That which you know naturally, you have to worship Allah Azza wa Jal with it. Number two, there are certain attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is gained through knowledge. That you might not know the exact name, but knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes you know in your worship, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you call Allah Azza wa Jal with those names. So it's an obligation. It's an obligation to worship Allah Ta'ala with these names, to call upon Allah Azza wa Jal with these names. An absolute obligation to know Allah Azza wa Jal with this. Either through your fitrah, for example, a person knows Allah Ta'ala through his fitrah, natural disposition. So some of the people that have a corrupted belief that say Allah, where is Allah? They say Allah is everywhere. Is this correct? Incorrect. Allah is not everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever in terms of his knowledge, yes, and awareness. But physically, Allah is not omnipresent everywhere. So one of the scholars, to show that some of the attributes of Allah is realized through fitrah, he debated one of the scholars of this belief, that had this particular belief. And this scholar that had this belief, true fitrah was defeated. He said, no problem, come with all the arguments, all the proof, all the language. He said, I'm going to ask you a question. Whenever you're making the du'a, where does your heart go towards? Left, right, forward, back, or towards the heavens? He said towards the heavens. So some things they realize naturally. Now, any other questions? Now. So the question from what I gather is, there's certain prayers that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say specifically a certain time, that the du'a of Qiyam, or when you get off a tahajjud. That this prayer, is it allowed to say it as other times? There's certain dua, like this dua, that is said at specific times. And it doesn't mean it must only be said at those specific times. However, if a person says, for example, I want to say at the fa time of Fajr, and I'm going to say at the time of Fajr, it specifies it for Fajr without being specified, it becomes a bid'ah. But if he just says it at that moment, reflecting and thinking, you could say it at those times. And in regards to your question as well, there's certain things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say at certain times because it's connected to certain things. So for example, the dua of getting up at night, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will mention what? Rabba Jibra'il, the Lord of Jibreel and the Lord of who? Israfil. And 
Mikail. Why would the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What's the connection of getting up to him mentioning the Lord of these angels? What is the connection? Because like we said before, Allah Taala, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayy al-qayyum. La ta'quduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Death is a form of what? Afwan. Sleep is a form of what? Death. So when you get up again, it's as though you've been given what? Life. So what's the connection of uh, Mikael? It, what's the job of Mikael, the angel? What's the job of Israfil? Huh? Hey, what? Burn the trouble in your Muqiyama. So after you die, your muk and Allah gives you life again, he's responsible for what? Blowing the trumpet, I'll give you what? Life. What's the one of uh, Mikael? Send rain. Send rain. Gives life to the earth after he's dead. And Jibreel, what life does he give? Barakallah. Life to the heart. Now, the clear definition of that is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the brother is asking, you ask Allah Ta'ala بِكُلِّ إِسْمٍ هُوَ لَكَ سَمِّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسِكَ That you've named yourself with. أو أنزلته في كتابه أو يسند عن يبطل القرآن أو علمته أحد من خلقك أو يتو أني of your creation. Based on this, the ulama they say the names of Allah Taala as is properly propagated. They're not what? They're not ninety nine. They're not ninety nine. Always that thorough tafsir in the ghayb عندك or is in the knowledge or the unseen with you. Meaning there's certain names of Allah Subhanahu Taala that's unknown to us. Right? And this knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi ilm ghayb inda is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the unseen. And when it comes to the affairs of the unseen, we leave it as from the unseen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some of the scholars in their explanation of this, that there's certain names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are so great that even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, you, you, our minds cannot comprehend it. So fi ilm ghayb inda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowledge of the same of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not sure what other interpretation other people may give it that they have uh, knowledge of this unseen. Nah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get some of these astray sects that this thing of the ghayb, they've captured it. So they'll give you a name. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the Sunnah. You understand? But in the ghayb, no one has the knowledge of the unseen but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, man irtada. Whoever Allah ta'ala is pleased, is pleased with to make it unveiled to him, the knowledge of the unseen. As Allah Ta'ala said, is the know of the unseen. It doesn't show the unseen to anybody. Illa man irtada. Except for whoever is pleased for him to show it to min rasulin from a messenger. And who is making this dua here? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of the messengers. Yet he's saying, fi ilm ghayb indak. So if he doesn't know, who knows? Now. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وليك بارك الله فيك